I think in the choice of the technology or the means by which both can be cast, we have to take into account the political history of a given place, for instance. Uh, you mentioned about both buying, well, that is very prevalent in the Philippines also. Now, uh, in our case, we, I mean, technology or electronic voting does not aim to solve the, the different types of cheating that normally occur during election. In our case, it's essentially the count and the tabulation that we are trying to resolve because this is where the big scale cheating normally occur and it will not address online. So I agree with you, in certain, age, in, uh, in certain cases where, let us say, uh, the, the integrity of the vote will be compromised, then that should be up for the government or for the country to decide whether or not they will allow online voting. That is being discussed with us also in the Philippines because we have uh, 10 million Filipinos working abroad. So it would be good to have what you call online voting, postal voting, advanced voting, and the other uh, voting procedures. But we do consider this in the line of our culture, political culture, that bulk buying has been rampant. So we may not consider uh, procedures unless we can introduce the necessary controls. Uh, if, if I may add to that, going to the example of Germany, what I can think of is perhaps, and I'm not so sure about this, but perhaps the manual process itself is very transparent. Therefore, if you switch over to an automated system, you would lose that particular advantage. So, and I would say that if it's embedded in the Constitution, that means it's a very important issue for the Germans. In our case, as I explained earlier, it is quite different. In the case of both buying, if you look at the, the uh, if I will, if you will, the, the details or mechanics of both buying, I don't think the internet voting perhaps will make it easier, but it still doesn't solve the issue that money becomes a decider in choosing candidates. For those who are very good, they do their work up even before, long before elections, and perhaps they use money or perhaps they use favors. And I think, um, if, 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 to be candid about this, I think there has to be a dissecting of, of the issue. Uh, internet voting or not, it's still very difficult to prosecute both buyers and both sellers. And I can say that for a fact from over here. Whether the technology is for both buyers or is it for voters, I would say it's still for voters, and and, and we would perhaps uh, we are considering very seriously uh, postal or or uh, internet voting because there, as you may have known, there are a number of Filipinos outside of this country working elsewhere. In our turnout, the number of Filipinos are registered. If there are, there are millions are abroad, number of those who are registered to be voters is just five hundred thousand, and the turnout was just thirty percent of that. And for the collect and for our Congress, there is a cause for change. That we have to be able to draw these people to become voters, not just workers elsewhere. And the only way to do this is to allow for internet voting. Then again, you would have a hierarchy of decisions that you have to make. And vote buying, of course, is an issue that has to be, you know, recognized. But it's not something that you would say we cannot do internet voting because vote buying cannot be. So, um, Peter Novotny, is, I notice, is on, and I think Peter is in Estonia at the moment and is looking at the question of Internet voting, which is the only country that has allowed uh, Internet voting inside the country uh, previously. So I'm going to ask uh, Peter to, to turn on his microphone, if he can, and, and to join us in a minute. Um, the first part of Dina's question, though, was about uh, the decision in Germany uh, to move away from electronic voting. Um, it's not the only country that's done that. Uh, in the Netherlands, which is another country that's had 
uh, electronic voting over a, a number of years, and I think up to 70% of the people in that country at one point uh, were voting uh, on electronic machines. Um, because of the vulnerability of the machines that were discovered, um, the, there was a Blue Ribbon Commission um, that recommended moving away, and the Parliament recommended moving away, and eventually the court um, ruled uh, that it had to be set aside. So they have gone back uh, the, to the paper ballot and are reconsidering the question um, as well. Ireland has moved away um, from electronic voting in addition. So there are at least three European countries that have had a long-standing experience with this. There was a lot of public confidence, but public confidence has been reversed for a number of reasons. In the United States, as everyone knows, there was a rush uh, to electronic voting after uh, the problems of the 2000 uh, elections. And that rush turned out to be uh, unfortunate because we went to a system here largely without a verified voter paper trail. Uh, and it was, we would say, black box voting. There was no way really to determine how people were voted. All across the United States, um, there's been a movement away from that form of voting, some back to paper ballots and some using the optical scan ballot um, as a, a form of uh, electronic voting, electronic tabulation, in, in effect, um, across the United States. All of these things are in play. In India, which has been highly touted for its voting machine, um, a close look at what Indian civil society has had to say about it and Indian political parties show that inside the country, that voting machine, which gives no paper trail, is under attack. Um, the, the level of confidence has been going down, and in fact, um, there is a, a, a study that's been done of one of those machines by an advocate in India who was joined by two experts uh, in the United States on this, which showed the vulnerability of the voting machine. And unfortunately, the Indian government responded by arresting uh, the Indian advocate, claiming that he had illegally come into possession of a voting machine which had been given to him by uh, an election official. And uh, there's an example of freedom of expression um, being tranced by the government of India. And uh, an advocate of open and accountable governance um, has been in jail. And this has become now um, a human rights issue that a lot of organizations have raised. I mean, even other, other governments have raised with India concern about this. In Brazil, there's a voting machine uh, that's used across Brazil that hasn't had a, a lot of uh, controversy, which also does not have a paper trail. And inside Brazil and across Latin America, there are a number of questions being raised about this. So globally, there are a lot of questions being raised about the efficacy of certain technologies uh, in electronic voting, even when they have been uh, adopted. And I think the conversation today um, has shown those points. On internet voting, and I hope Peter will come in on this. You know, my experience in looking at that question has been for people who are outside the country, overseas voting, where the alternative is not to vote, disenfranchisement. And many, many countries pursue that rule. They don't allow external voting. Um, but where it has been allowed, a postal ballot is open uh, to vote buying. It's open to families or other members uh, putting pressure on a person to vote not in secret, um, just as internet voting is. And so the questions about whether it can be done securely um, are an additional question, and whether it can be tampered with external, externally um, somehow. And there are other technical questions that have to do with voting security that I hope Peter will talk about. But generally speaking, the view has been this should not be allowed inside a country, that people inside the country should go to polling stations. Um, there may be electronic voting in a polling station in a closed system, which is more secure, um, and so on. So let me sign off on that and, and see if Peter uh, can come on.